My long distance girlfriend wanted to video call me. Now I hear tapping on my window. About a year ago, I joined a Japanese culture appreciation club in my college. As a person who had a love for the culture, I was assigned to show some traveling students the sights around the country, and that's how I met my girlfriend, Misaki. She was friendly and very eager to befriend me when we first met, and we kept in touch long enough for us to decide to test the waters a little. We kept video chatting and texting each other to maintain our relationship, and so far it has been working out for us. The first part may sound like digressing on my part, but I needed to get this out of the way because of what has been happening between us for the past week. So for starters, I managed to catch the dreaded coronavirus, so I had been keeping myself quarantined in my apartment until I got better. I've kept in touch with my family and friends and reassuring them that I'm fine and I will recover from it. Misaki was obviously one of them, and aside from my parents, she's been checking up on me the most. But then it got weird. Anyone who's ever known me for quite a long time knows I tend to go to bed around 9pm. Well imagine my surprise to hear her ringtone at 11pm. I groan, still feeling weak from the sickness, I check who the hell was calling me at this time. Imagine my surprise to see Misaki's name on the caller screen, I answer it, putting the phone on loudspeaker. Hello. I spoke out. Lawrence. She called out in a heavily accented voice. Hi. Mr. Chan, why are you calling me at this time? I asked, a bit annoyed but I did not want to shun her immediately. Eh, can we video chat please? Misaki asked, though I silently groaned to myself. Can't this wait until tomorrow? Please. It's really important. Misaki pleaded and I did eventually relent, since this did sound very urgent. I booted up my laptop and launched the messaging app, immediately entering video chat mode to see Misaki already at the computer. So what is it? I yawned as she seemed rather pensive about something. I want to teach you to make an afuda. Afuda being those protective talismans hung around the house in Japan for protection of the household. It was really suspicious, since I never even heard of a DIY afuda, which as far as I can recall, is about the equivalent of making holy water from a faucet. Now, I asked, I had to stay awake for this crap? Apologies for the bluntness. Is this really urgent? Please. I know it's a bother, but please do it with me. Misaki pleaded, I was sleepy and sick, but I could have caught a hint of desperate yawn in her voice. I sighed and nodded, being compliant and hoping this was something good. Misaki sighed in relief. Okay, you won't regret this. She sighed in relief as she then took some materials and showed them to me. You need brush pen and Japanese paper. Misaki showed to me the tools I needed. You still have art materials I mailed you? Yes. I groaned as I took them out from under my bed. Okay good. Now I want you to choose from any of these afuda and write their character down on your piece of paper. She instructed though she seemed to be in a bit of a rush. It was only 11.30pm, so I wasn't sure what the hurry was. If you're in a hurry we could. No, no, no. It's fine. Just pick one. Misaki said, irritated though she really wasn't in any place to be irritated, since she woke me up for this. But I chose one and showed it to her. Okay good, now copy the characters onto your paper. I did as told though my penmanship wasn't exactly the best, since I was an amateur at drawing characters not to mention very sleepy and very sick. I replicated it as best as I could and then showed it to her. She nodded at that, audibly panting as I showed it to her. She still looked like she was in a hurry, but as if someone's life depended on it. Okay, now do you have any holy items with you? Misaki asked. I have some holy water and salt I think. I yawned. It was 11.45. Oh okay. Sprinkle them onto your paper and say a shorter prayer. Are you sure? It's not Japanese. Just do it please. Misaki begged me again as I relented yet again, taking the water and the salt from the altar and then sprinkling them over my crudely made afuda, muttering a Hail Mary and a Glory Be, not that I really believed in those, but those were the only prayers I knew. I wasn't sure what all this was for anyway, but if it made her happy, then I could keep this up a bit longer. Okay, I'm done. Hang it on your window. Misaki instructed as I did just that, hanging the afuda on the curtains and then returning to my laptop. It was 11.55 by the time we finished. 
Miss Saki sighed as she looked at the clock behind her. She seemed rather exhausted by this herself, despite having to bother me for it. Are you okay Misaki? I asked, though Misaki broke into soft sobs the moment I asked that. I'm sorry about this. I'm just trying to save your life. Misaki broke down though I still failed to understand what she meant. There wasn't much time to explain to you but please serve if. Video freezes and gets cut off. I look at the clock. 12 a.m. I assume it was just an internet failure, since you never could trust these companies anyway. I close my laptop and immediately go to bed. Though as soon as I close my eyes, I can hear a soft tapping on my window. I ignored it for a short period of time, but the incessant tapping kept me from fully falling asleep despite my condition. I sat up from the bed, unable to sleep with that tapping on my window. I glance at my poorly made afuda to see that the bottom portion of the paper was slowly turning black. And from the tiniest gap in the curtains, I could see wide bloodshot eyes staring right into my room.